My question is to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. How is the Albanese Labor government ensuring our economy is prepared for the opportunities of a de decarbonising world? And what are the risks of not acting? We call to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to my honourable friend for his leadership on matters of climate and his advocacy on matters of climate. And, Mr. Speaker, Australia is on the cusp. We're on the cusp of a remarkable opportunity. Order. Around the world, there is a search for clean, green, cheap energy. Around the world, there is a hunger for critical minerals and rare earths. We are on this cusp of a remarkable opportunity, Mr. Speaker, and it will take policies to make this opportunity a reality. And there are three key policies to making this so. Firstly, there's the government's safeguards reforms, which are important for reducing emissions to 105 million tonnes, but they're also vital for certainty. And they're vital as the world's consumers and investors are looking for companies with real plans to net zero and real frameworks to achieve it. And this point was made by the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury in Senate estimates today, uh, Luke Yeaman, who pointed out that this sort of framework is vital for attracting capital to Australian industry. And he also pointed out that there was a Treasurer who had made similar points, but not the current Treasurer, the former Treasurer, the former member for Kuyong, was making this point just a few months ago, Mr Speaker, but a few things have changed since then. The second policy which is vital is the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. Now, this is an existing policy, but it's still a key policy, and it's a policy that was opposed by those opposite. The member for Bradfield predicted it would be a financial disaster. Now, the CFC, for every dollar they invest, they unleash $2.60 of private investment. And for one example, they're co-investing in new electric vehicles for mines, reducing emissions by 46,000 tonnes a year, delivering trucks and, and, and mining equipment, which is more comfortable for their drivers and workers. But of course, the coalition has opposed the CEFC. And the final policy is the National Reconstruction Fund, with up to $3 billion allocated for clean energy transition. We don't want to just be the, com the country which provides the world with clean energy. We want to be the country that makes the things that provides clean energy around the world. And there's also a billion dollars allocated for processing and value-adding of critical minerals. But those who oppose this don't want us to value-add to our critical minerals. They don't want us to manufacture in Australia, Mr Speaker. The three things which, which bring these policies together and make them connected is not only that they are key, it's that the opposition has been against them in all three cases. The Leader of the Opposition is a triple threat in the worst sense of the word, Mr Speaker. He's a triple threat to the Australian economy, a triple threat to the opportunities available to us. I grant him this. His shadow ministry meetings must be pretty efficient. Yeah. The government wants to create jobs? Yeah, nah. No need for a submission. Just, yeah, nah, we're not doing that. Wants a housing fund? Yeah, nah. They must have really quick meetings, Mr Speaker. They want to have a safeguards reform to actually reduce emissions and create jobs? Yeah, Order. nah. The Australia deserves better than this. Leader That's of the concluded.